hi and welcome to the video tutorial on making depth maps with blender first i'm going to talk about importing a 3d model into blender then using compositor nodes and along the way i'm going to talk about some uh, functions of blender and some uh, things relevant to making stereograms maybe let's get started first we're going to need a 3d model so i've used free 3d uh, quite a bit um, I like them just because you don't have to log in really, that, that, that's the whole thing. You can see this model comes with uh, many different formats. Um, obviously there's the Blender file. I usually stay away from them because I like uh, using my own setup for making the depth maps. Generally I just use an old uh, depth map file and I put in a new model just because then most of the work's already done. Uh, but good models, uh, good uh, file formats to import into Blender are FBX, OBJ, SDL. At least those are the ones that I, I prefer to use. So let's use an OBJ. Or I just, uh, I, I don't know, I call it object, but who knows what it's really called. I'm going to extract this here. I had already downloaded it, so I had to hit replace. Now let's open Blender. So this is the default screen uh, that comes up uh, with Blender. You can see that there's a, a light and there's a cube. Um, I'm going to delete both of those. There's also a camera, so let's go. But let's delete the light and the cube. That's what we need to get rid of first. X is to delete. After selecting it, delete. And we'll. You can see the camera right there. Um, next, I'm going to set up the uh, the interface here a little bit. Uh, by changing around the different viewports. What a viewport is, is just these different windows. And so I'm going to have one there, one here. Then I'm going to create another one by going up here, crosshairs, pull over, and let's uh, set them up. This one right here, I'm going to put out our, our rendered image. So I'll go image editor, and then that button, and then render result. Since there's nothing rendered yet, it's blank. Here I'm going to set up compositor nodes. So compositor use nodes. I'm just using the scroll wheel on the mouse there. Clicking off both of those and there we go. And uh, now we're uh, ready to import the model. We could have imported the model before and done this in, different, uh, in a different order. So let's import the model. Object. Open downloads. There we go. At this point, I'm going to go into camera view, and that's just that little button right there. Quite often, what happens is um, when you import a model, uh, y you don't see it. And the, the reason is, is just because it's too big. So it might be something, might be something like that, and you're like, oh, where's the model? And you're like, oh, I don't know. So what? Um, a couple things that I do sometimes, sometimes I'll zoom out to see if I can see it. Um, but generally I just hit S for uh, scale and um, I make it smaller. You, you, you can see the import here and that you're selected by what's happening uh, in, in this menu bar on the side. Um, often when you import things, they're not named appropriately. They're just like, uh, this, this is a default name, but some often they're just like a, a number or uh, sometimes they actually have a proper name, but you know it's imported uh, by looking inside there. So let's hit S. So I can bring it down, I can hit G to move it a little bit, I can hit scale again, and see how I'm, uh, that little orange dot, that's the origin point that I'm moving it towards to. G, scale. There's another thing uh, you can do is you can rotate. If you hit R once, it's just rotate on that one plane. Or if you hit RR, then you get a kind of a freeform rotate. Notice that how uh, when I'm rotating, it's rotating around that um, uh, that little orange dot. I don't know uh, quite why, but um, sometimes when you import it, that dot is really far away from um, the actual model. And what you can do is you can bring the dot into the model by doing this. And it's when you click on the object, you go set origin, 
and go geometry to origin and see how the dots changed inside the model. So now when I rotate, uh, it it's more uh, it's rotating around that point, but it's actually inside the model instead of below it, which uh, is a little bit more intuitive when you're moving it around. If I were to render it just like this by pressing F12, I'll show you another way to do it. It'll show me this. I've turned off the lights, so um, it just shows me kind of the, the, the wolf in dark. It's not nothing to do with depth yet. There's the other way to render, but I prefer the keyboard command F12. So let's bring over the depth, over the image, and you'll see that it's changed here. Uh, what happens is uh, what this scene right here, when it's rendered, it goes over here, and then the nodes uh, kind of interpret that render, right? So think of um, uh, from the camera that uh, rays were traced to the scene and it creates kind of uh, this output. Um, and uh, th then the compositor uh, uh, displays it afterwards. So right now we don't see, uh, um, see a depth map yet. And I know, uh, I don't know if you can see this on your screen, but there's a very faint outline of the wolf right there, or the dog, or whatever, whatever the model will be. Um, and it's a, it's a scaling issue. Just be basically what it's doing, it has the dog as a three, as a depth map, but it, uh, it has a scale of probably one to 64,000 or something around that. It's probably uh, based on a 32-bit. Um, what we're going to do is uh, normalize the image so it makes it more intelligible to us. So I, if I hit Shift A, I get an input menu and I'm going to go input and uh, or I'm going to go search and I'm going to look for normalize. Normalize. And I'm just going to place it right in there. And you can see instantly now that becomes something that we're more recognized as a as a depth map. At this point, we're still not done yet, and there's a, a couple issues for making stereograms from this depth map. Uh, the first one is um, these black points are probably too black, and they might cause issues with the uh, stereogram generator, just because they're uh, think of it as like a a full uh, on the scale from zero to one. It, that's a full one and uh, it might cause you uh, artifact issues in your stereogram uh, generator. Um, the other issue here is your uh, the stereogram generator is probably going to dock this tail right about there, depending, and it'll just uh, blend into the background. I'm not even sure that leg will show up uh, right off the bat. So uh, what we can do is we can add in a color ramp. So down on this screen again, shift A. And I'll go search again, and color. Color ramp. I'm going to put that right in the middle. So to deal with that uh, value that's just too dark, what we can do is we can back off the black, and just go like that. Um, let's add some color at this point. And to deal with the the dog, uh, with the wolf being too close to the background, what we could do is um, add in another point for on this gradient scale, on this ramp. We'll just go plus there, and we're going to bring it down like that. And you can see how uh, it kind of uh, differentiates itself a little bit better. Let's uh, give this another color. Oh. You gotta be careful, um, it, especially try and keep the uh, the color that you choose. It, or if you choose a uh, color here, um, something similar to what it was before. Just because if you go, uh, if you change it too drastically, you might cause issues in between uh, layers on the gradient. So I think that one's gonna work more or less all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, th th if it's just like a, basically these two are our functional um, points of the dog. So as long as that's just one, uh, you should never really have an issue uh, per se on it, uh, the scale being messed up. 
So this is what I call an inverse uh, depth map. If you prefer to work with a, what I call a regular depth map, you can add an inversion in here. Um, so let's go shift A and we'll go search and invert. The reason I don't like working um, with the regular depth maps is I don't I, I have a lot of trouble seeing the difference in depth uh, uh, using this method. So that that's why I use um, uh, what I call an inverted depth map. You can just delete these nodes, same thing using X, just like I deleted the uh, 3D objects. Depending on uh, the model and the um, stereogram I'm trying to make, sometimes uh, I want to put a bit of a blur on here to reduce artifacts. So you can add a blur into this space right here and um, the just the slightest uh, blur is helpful. I'm, I'm I experiment around uh, every time I, I kind of do it and I, I don't have um, really hard fast information for you on that right now. So we're pretty much ready to output this. You can kind of see we got a nice uh, distinct outline going around. The everything looks quite well formed. Let's look at some options for output. So here's your resolution. And you can see 1920 um, by 1080, 100%. Uh, I like the scaling um, part here quite often just because if you're doing uh, something that's quite big and uh, but you want a quick render just to get an idea of what it is, you can set it to a much lower scale. I prefer 16-bit uh, color depth over 8-bit. Uh, I just want, uh, I don't know if it's just my, me and my mind, but I think it has a little bit more uh, detail um, that I see in it. Um, you know, it, it's kind of, uh, at that point, it's probably subjective to, some, some people say they don't see it, I don't know. When using Blender, there's different uh, render engines, and by default, it probably you might even use Cycles. Cycles is good, um, not necessarily useful for using depth maps, but if you are using Cycles, I'd recommend using GPU Compute if you have an appropriate GPU. If this box is grayed out here, you might have to go over to Edit and uh, enable your GPU in the Preferences menu. But for do doing depth maps, I really recommend just using EV Engine. So I think we're ready to uh, output, output the image, and it's really easy. We just have to bring our mouse over um, the rendered window, or while we're in the rendered screen, and all you press Alt S, and that uh, creates a saved image. This is my name, uh, Nama Salter. Oh. Wha Uh, I, I usually name my stuff like something like dm.i uh, and the thing that png png sorry um, it's my own nomenclature you can use your own it doesn't matter who cares <laughs> okay that's kind of the basics of making uh, depth maps in blender thanks